installment of Bergeron Briefs. My name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, many of you have seen me before. I focus on elder law issues and we're devoting these shows to issues that I feel uh, are or should be of concerns to elders. Today uh, we're talking about Alzheimer's disease. We're talking about early issues involving Alzheimer's, about prevention, about how to spot it, what to do if you spot it, and I've got two great guests with me. I've got Julie McMurray from the Alzheimer's Association of Massachusetts and New Hampshire. Hi. Uh, and Tammy Pazaricki, uh, who uh, runs a wonderful place called Pleasantries. And, but she's going to tell you a little bit about that. Julie, first, can you just kind of tell me about who you are and what you do and what the great. Alzheimer's Association is? So um, I am the regional manager at the central regional office of the Alzheimer's Association, um, which is located in Worcester. Um, but we are part of mm -hmm. the Massachusetts, New Hampshire chapter of the Alzheimer's Association uh, with our main office in Watertown. And then we have regional offices in Raynham, Springfield, Bedford, New Hampshire, and Lebanon, New Hampshire. So you've got a big presence right here in Massachusetts. Absolutely. And our mission really is to enhance care and support for people living with the disease, their family, and their caregivers. We are also the largest funder of research nationwide. Um, and uh, we also like to educate people on ways to reduce the risk for developing Alzheimer's disease. Which is one of the reasons why you're here. And you're not, the organization's a nonprofit organization. We are a nonprofit organization, that is correct. And, and Tammy, can you just tell me about yourself and, and, and about your organization? Sure. Um, I run Pleasantries, Adult Day and Consulting Services, and it's located in Marlboro. It's a small ranch home that is dedicated to caring for folks with memory impairment, and that may be due to Alzheimer's or dementia. Um, and it's 10 to 14 folks come to my home every day, and we run really um, successful activities, failure-free activities for them, keep their minds busy, um, and socialize with each other. Maybe so. maybe we'll call it beyond adult daycare. I know that you always hate that term, adult, day, adult it, daycare. It's a tough it's a yeah. tough concept, adult right. daycare. Right. Um, it, so adult day services so, si sounds a little bit better. Yeah. But we'll talk about that a little bit later sure. on. So, uh, and by the way, Julie, b before you did the Alzheimer's Association, what did you do before that? So I've been with the Alzheimer's Association for 10 years. Wow. Yes. Wow. Um, but I've been in the field for about 20 years. Um, so my background is um, that I've worked in assisted living, nursing homes, and um, an adult day health program. Um, but I have a master's in counseling. Um, so I've been in the field quite a long time working with people with Alzheimer's disease and dementia and their families. And you also obviously like this kind of work because that's a long time to be doing uh, this. Yes, I, I feel that um, it's a very rewarding field to be in. Um, mm -hmm. Ideally, I'd love to be out of a job, but I feel until that time um, that we provide support and information and really help families um, navigate all the community resources and we offer hope to families. And by the way, one of the things we're going we're gonna to be, we're gonna be talking about during the course of the show your 24-hour helpline, and I just wanted to mention to folks, this is the one place where you can go on an ongoing basis for free. You can call, whether it's in the middle of the night and you've got a crisis, or whether you're just kind of thinking about this stuff and you want more information. There's some place you can always call, and that's the Alzheimer's Association. So one of the things I want to start off by talking about was, I know I, I so often talk to clients, I realize that so much of my work in elder law involves people who are either in early stages of a disease that causes dementia, and we know that Alzheimer's causes most of the most of the dementias. 
uh, or people who are in late stages or people who are worried about it. Mm -hmm. It's like the whole, so much of the world is thinking about this. It, but it, and it was always my sense when I get into this that, that Alzheimer's as opposed to most other diseases was totally luck of the draw. This was just a roulette wheel and you know, maybe you get hit and maybe you don't. Uh, but, but are there, on the other hand, one of the things I've been learning, are there things that you can do um, if you're worried about getting Alzheimer's in the future to reduce that risk? Absolutely. Um, you know, when we think about physical health, you really want to incorporate your brain. You want to stay as active as possible, both physically and mentally. You want to think about your diet, and we will often tell individuals if you're good to your heart, you're being good to your brain. So yeah. eating uh, foods that are rich in antioxidants, um, decreasing red meat, um, Flaxseed oil is good, the uh, fatty-free omega um, fats are very good, um, but you also want to think about um, other health issues. Mm -hmm. um, again, diabetes can cause um, some type of dementia later on, so thinking about all your um, numbers, your blood sugars, your blood pressure, your cholesterol, and yep. your weight. Um, and yep. making sure that you visit your doctor um, on a regular basis to make sure, that the, sure those things are in place. And another simple thing that you can do is to wear your seatbelt. Um, protect your head from any type of traumatic head injury. Yep. Um, wearing a helmet when you're bike riding or skiing. Um, but again, staying physically active. Um, and also mentally active is really important. And, and if people visited your website, could they get any information on some of those things, on nutrition tips? And Absolutely. All that? All right. um, yeah, we call our program Maintain Your Brain. Um, and yeah. it's, we provide very simple information and tips on keeping your brain healthy um, as you age. And it really starts at a very young age um, because age is the biggest risk factor. When, when you say that, you're, you're significantly more likely to have Alzheimer's the older you yep. get. Yeah, and the longer that you live. I remember seeing this one statistic that something like 80, like your chances of being having Alzheimer's once you're over 85 are yeah. like 50-50. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, a, that's an amazing, yeah, it, that's an amazing it's number. It's estimated that um, ha uh, half the population over the age of 85 will develop Alzheimer's disease and 10% of the population over 65 will develop the disease. So it's the, your chances are, are significantly higher yes. the, 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 Longer older, you. the older you get. Right. The older you get. Correct. So I just want to kind of move from there to kind of one of the basic issues that once again we always hear from folks. You know, I can't find my keys. Is this it? You know, do I have right. Alzheimer's now? Right. Now I know that both of you see people regularly or talk to families and individuals who are kind of dealing dealing with this issue. Are, are there? How do you tell? Like, what are the warning signs of that you may be getting early stages of Alzheimer's? Wait a minute, let me step back one question. One question before that: Can Alzheimer's be diagnosed before the symptoms are there? So, can you, is, he, can you do, is there any kind of predictive stuff or do you have to wait for the symptoms to show up? So that's really where current research is right now. We're trying to uh, look at ways of um, determining um, those triggers um, prior to the onset of symptoms. So that's really um, what's happening in research. But I always tell families that, you know, we all forget as we age. Um, but it really is when that forgetfulness interferes with normal day-to-day -day activities. Mm -hmm. um, we all misplace things, um, but it's when we're misplacing things but are unable to retrace our steps to find those missing items that are really mm -hmm. cause for concerns and that's really when you want to start having a conversation with your primary care physician and hopefully then he will um, make the necessary referrals to other doctors to, to determine what's going on. To kind of deal with it. And Absolutely. Tammy, from your perspective, when you're seeing folks coming in and you're, you, you end up being a counselor, right, because you're really talking with folks about a whole, who are concerned about a whole variety of issues. Uh, are there any other particular things that you see or that you, f that you find are common symptoms that you kind of spot in the people that you're dealing with? You know, it's or, or funny, the, the, the family members and the people that are closest to them yeah. are the ones that are furthest from recognizing <laughs> the issues and the symptoms, I think, because a lot of what happens, especially with spouses, uh, one covers for the other, and it just right. becomes this 
ebb and flow of their relationship. Um, so the concern might come when someone's actually still working mm -hmm. and the employer sees that things are missing and jobs aren't done, and, but a, a person who would otherwise have been getting everything turned in on time. Um, and it really depends upon when I see them. Yeah. It could be that I look at them and say, oh, I wish I found you, you know, mm -hmm. you found me two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, they might be at the stage where they're having word finding difficulty. Mm -hmm. um, the, the one exciting thing that, mm -hmm. that Julie was mentioning about the Alzheimer's Association, the research that's being done, is that they're really trying to seek out folks before the symptoms show mm -hmm. because that's okay. when the main studies of the brain can really help to see other medications out there that can really stunt this progression of Alzheimer's 